Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Before we get started, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. Every like and subscription really helps the channel. You know what's even better? Tell your friends about it. Tell them all about the best wine show anywhere. All right. So, welcome to my series of reviews of wines from Domaine Bousquet. Now, I've reviewed several of their wines over the past few years. If this sounds familiar, it's going to sound familiar. So if this is your first time seeing any of my reviews of the wines, please check out the first video of this series about the Sauvignon Blanc. Now, I covered the background of the winery and the region in that video. All right, so let's just get into the stats of this wine. This is the 2018 Domaine Bousquet Gaia Cabernet Franc. Suggested retail price is $20. It's from the... Guatiari Valley in Tupangato in Uco Valley in Mendoza, Argentina. It's 100% Cabernet Franc. It's a certified organic vineyard. It's made with organic grapes. It's hand harvested. Elevation is 1,200 meters or 3,900 feet. The soil is gravel and sand. It is Asian French oak between 8 and 10 months. The ABV is 15.4%. The TA or total acidity is 6.07. The pH is right at that sweet spot of 3.7. And the RS is 2.3 grams per liter or the residual sugar. All right, so let's get into the wine. I am, well, I'm always excited to try the wines from Bousquet. I'm especially excited of doing a Cabernet Franc. I tend to like wines made of Cabernet Franc, especially if it's 100% Cab Franc. Did you watch my series of videos about the Great California Cab Shootout? Like my rock, you like my rock band story? I know it's kind of long. I spent a lot of time coming up with that, making sure that the references I was using were correct, or I felt like as far as what each grape did would do in a band, at least a Napa Valley uh, wine based on those grapes. All right, so I was pouring this. Okay, so this is what vintage again? 18. So three and a half years now. Remember, they're six months ahead. And harvest, right when I'm recording this, is the September 2nd, 3rd-ish. Uh, harvest has just started in the North Hemisphere. Well, in Texas, it had already started like a month ago. But uh, harvest is starting normally around now. So... There's a little bit of orange going on here. I wouldn't call it super oxidized, but you know, there's there's a kind of a really deep concentration of yellow with a little bit of orange. Okay, so that would sell me like a little bit of oxidation. Now there was Asian oak barrels for for several months, and then after that, it's been in the bottle. I would call it medium staining on the glass. I think it was a little more staining than than uh, the last wine I did, the the Cabernet Sauvignon. Got a little bit of corkage in there. Let's check it out. So, um, you know, it's not too youthful on the nose. I mean, it's it's right around that break point of where I would call it a one to three to four to six in a blind. So we would kind of call that developing. So I think there's a little bit of you can smell a little bit of development. It's not fresh and youthful. Medium plus. Um, the fruit's there, but it's starting to take a um, a secondary role. But I got some really, I got more dark fruit from this, like, you know, darker black, red fruit. I also got a bit of violet to it. But, you know, I've got like, I've got the blackberry. I also got a bit of black licorice to it. There is a slight herbaceousness to it. I don't know if this is the pyrazines that would normally come from Cabernet Franc. Um, Cabernet Franc, a lot of times, will present pyrazines a little bit more than Cabernet Sauvignon, which is its uh, offspring. But I also get a bit of a roasted coffee smell. 
that could come from the barrel aging, you know, the, how, how heavy the barrels are toasted. I get this kind of sweetness of fruit. It's almost like a, like a dried fruit type of thing, like a raisination. You can really smell the alcohol in it. I mean, as far as the oak aging, I mean, I got that bit of coffee. So again, that's, that could be toasting. It also could be oxidation going on. I don't really get a lot of, and a touch of cinnamon, but I don't get a lot of um, oak characteristics or, or what oak brings to a wine on the aroma. Let's just taste it. I like this wine. It's juicy. It's kind of big. Tannins are, are tannins are really, they're smooth. They're well integrated. There's a, there's an elegance to the wine. Um, there's a boldness to the wine. The fruit is still ripe. It's a little dried out, but it's ripe. And it's black fruit dominant. I mean, I don't really, I don't get any blue fruit, which I wouldn't necessarily expect. But I get black fruit. I get uh, like purple flowers, like violet, lavender. Kind of a potpourri thing going on. I get a little bit of like a clove type of thing coming on. Um, there's like a, a greenness to it, a fern, tarragon, herbaceousness. This is not an over-the-top pyrazinic wine. Because of the elevation, I would say that there is a lot, since there's a lot of sunlight hitting the skin, the pyrazines are probably mostly ripened out. So you're not going to get that bell pepper jalapeno smell from it. That's what happens with high altitude wines is that it builds up more and more tannin and, and phenolic um, ripeness in the skins. It's delicious. It's kind of got that, it really has that, you go, man, is this Cab? Yeah, it's Cab Franc. Oh, it's Cab Franc, not Cabernet Sauvignon. Like, you know it's the Cab family. You know it's the Bordeaux variety of grapes. It's got good acidity to it, even though it, the numbers aren't high. You can you can really taste or feel the acidity. So it's got a freshness to it. Uh, the tannin is is definitely present. Um, it's coating my mouth a lot. Again, this is a like like the last red wine, the regular cab. This is a food wine. You need like a juicy steak or pot roast, something with a lot of richness to it. Um, a lot of stuff for the tannin to play around with. It's tasty. All right. So that's uh, that's gonna do it for today's show. I just want to thank my good friends, Creative Pout, Kate and Jane, again, you know, for supplying these wines and their continued support of the show. And if you enjoy, ooh, the pyrazine is starting to come through a little bit more. Anyway, if you like what I'm doing here, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. Until you're, until then, and tell your friends about it. Until then, look for those pyrazines. That happens a lot with Cabernet Franc. It opens up a little bit more. Pyrazines start poking their head out. It's still not really there. It's just herbaceous. just came out a little bit more. Anyway, check it out. Cool stuff.